meeting for the Committee on Agriculture, Food, and Agrarian Reform is hereby called to order. Okay. May I acknowledge the present, the online presence of Senator Bongo, Senator Padilla, and Senator Binay to provide us the quorum for today. Thank you. The agenda for the, today's public hearing are the following bills and the resolution on salt industry development. Senate Bill Number 1334, an act strengthening and revitalizing the development of the salt industry in the Philippines, appropriating funds, therefore, amending Republic Act Number 8550, otherwise known as the Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998, and for other purposes authored by yours truly senate bill number 1450 an act promoting and revitalizing the salt industry of the philippines amending for the purpose republic act number 8172 otherwise known as an act for salt iodization nationwide providing funds therefore and for other purposes authored by senator joel villanueva and Senate Bill Number Senate Resolution Number Two Eleven, Resolution Directing the Proper Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the status of the country's salt supply and importation, with the objective of introducing new policies and reviewing existing measures and program to create salt self-sufficiency, by Senator Nancy Binay. I will now give the floor to the committee secretary, Attorney Philip Lina, to acknowledge a resource person present at today's hearing. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. For the Department of Agriculture, uh, they are being uh, represented by the OIC Director of BIFAR, Attorney Demostenes R. Escoto, with uh, Mr. Isidro Vilayo Jr., OIC Assistant Director for Technical Services, Ms. Lydia A. Morales, Chief Fisheries Post Harvest Technology Division, Ms. Kerry Acheri Romero, and Ms. Imelda Arida. For the Department of Trade and Industry, Madam Chair, uh, the Secretary is rep represented by Ms. Kalin Ann Ibora, Senior Trade Industry Development Specialist. Uh, from the Department of Science and Technology, Mr. Oliver Evangelista, Industrial Technology Development Institute expert. Ms. Jacqueline Dinglasan, Ms. Fedilia Flor Cimero, Ms. Mia Barbara D.V. Aranas, and Ms. Charmaine Angela Trilliana. From the Office of the, from the Department of Health, it is being represented now by Mr. Armond Argeles, Supervising Health Program Officer, Ms. Madeline Conjares, Mr. Chino Cairo Serrano. From the National Nutrition Council, it is being represented by Ms. Ellen Ruth F. Abelia, OIC Chief Nutrition Policy and Planning Division, and Ms. Giselle R. Bagos. Repeat the name again. Repeat the name. Uh, the National Nutrition Council, Madam you Chair. What's the name? Ms. Ellen Ruth F. Abelia. Uh, to proceed, Madam Chair, from the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Ms. Julieta Solivien and uh, Mr. Glenn Polo. From the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, we have Ms. Desiree Eve Armaano, the Chief Coastal and Marine Ecosystems. What's the name again? From the DNR, Madam Chair, Ms. Desiree Eve Armaano. Maano? Yes. And Mr. Joaquin Rehilio Silvestre from the DNR, Madam Chair. From the Food and Drug Administration, we have Ms. Givinia Tuazon, Ms. Olivia Jo Laurinana, Ms. Florita Descalyar Moraleja, and Mr. Christian Jonel Arnau. From the Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation, we have Ms. Melba P. Manalo, the Acting Vice President, Corporate Business Affairs Group, and Mr. Arvin Jasper R. Adan. 
from the Pangasinan State uh, University. Hold on, please. I'm looking for that. Oh, crop insurance. Manalo and Adan. Yes, okay. Madam Chair, from the PCIC. Go ahead. From the Pangasinan State University, Madam Chair, they were in, they are being invited because they are organ the organizers of the first SALT Congress. We have the president himself of the SUC, uh, Dr. Elbert, Elbert Galas, and fellow organizers, Dr. Paolo Senas, Engineer Quincy Jones Bundal, and Professor Francis Argente. From the Philippine Chamber of Agriculture and Food, Incorporated, the president, Dr. Danilo Fausto. <coughs> and from the Phil. Uh, a seen member, a feel, a feel a seen member, Madam Chair, Mr. Glenn John Konghon and Mr. Gerard Konghon and Mr. Felix Bernales Jr. from the Tamarao Salt Producers Cooperative Occidental Mindoro or Tamako, Madam Chair. Uh, from the DNR additional uh, arrival, Madam Chair, DNR Engineer Jerlyn Delphin. And from the Salt Industry Board of Pangasinan, Madam Chair, Ms. Evelyn Brigera, the Corporate Secretary, is online, Madam Chair. That's all for now, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Who came from the Mindoro Salt Farmers? What's the name? Magsino. Walang Bernales. Ayon, Bernales. Okay. Okay. Can you give me the list? Na maliwana ka. Okay. May list na. Ah, okay. Okay, mulan Tapos ito kunin mo, tapos i-update mo pag may dumating. Okay. May I first read the background of the Asin Law, the Commonwealth Act Number no. 141, Public Land Act of 1936, that was enacted at the time of the administration of President Manuel Rojas, formalized the leasing out of public lands and foreshore areas into fish ponds and salt farms. Several fish pond lease agreements were issued by the Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources, and the salt industry boomed as new fish ponds and salt farms were constructed in Pangasinan, Bulacan, Mindoro Occidental, Cavite, Paranaque, Negros, Cebu, and other provinces from the 1950s onwards. Salt producing areas in the Philippines reached an estimated peak of 5,000 hectares nationally, producing an estimated 240,000 metric tons annually. This boom in growth supported a growing population and the development of the salt industry in the 1960s and 1970s. In 1995, the Act for Salt Iodization Nationwide, or ASIN Law, or the Republic Act No. 8172, an act promoting salt iodization nationwide and for related purposes, was approved. The law required the addition of iodine to salt intended for human and animal consumption to eliminate micronutrient malnutrition particularly the iodine deficiency disorders in the country. One of the most common effects of iodine deficiency is goiter. 
The law covered the entire salt industry, including salt producers, manufacturers, importers, traders, and distributors, as well as government and non-government agency involved in salt iodization activities. The law mandated LGUs to support the development and sustainability of the salt industry through the formulation of ordinances and information campaigns promoting the availability and use of iodized salt and the provision of budget for health and nutrition program. To support the salt industry, RA8172 created the Salt Iodization Advisory Board composed of the National Nutrition Council, DNR, salt manufacturers, medical practitioner, but in the IRR, the National Nutrition Council created the Salt Iodization Advisory Board composed of the Department of, Department of Agriculture, Health, Social Welfare and Development, Education, Science and Technology, Interior and Local Government, Labor and Employment, Trade and Industry, Budget Management, the NEDA, its three private sector representative and a representative each from the DNR, the medical profession, and the salt manufacturers, with a total of 17 members. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources was tasked to identify areas that are suitable for use on salt farms with the purpose of protecting such areas from environmental risk to ensure sustainability of iodized salt production. Pursuant to this, they created DNR Administrative Order num Number 98-67-S-1998, uh, uh, Series 1998, Guidelines for the Identification, Declaration, and Award of Areas Suitable for Salt Production. The ASIN law provided for sanctions for offenders such that any person, whether natural or judicial, who violates any of the provision of this act or any of the rules and regulation promulgated shall be punished by a fine of not less than 1,000 pesos to not, to not more than 100,000 pesos and the revocation of its business permit and or bond of its product from the market. The law, instead of promoting, became a deterrent in the development of the local salt industry. It has neglected new areas and invite new investors. It made all salt food grade. In 2021, it was reported that we only produced 7% of our salt requirements and imported 93%, which is 550,000 metric tons. So... If uh, 600. So today we're going to do a public hearing on the salt industry because of what happened after that iodization law. So uh, I just want to ask, uh, I want to recognize the presence of Senator Villanueva online. Uh, he wants to make an opening statement. We recognize Senator Villanueva. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much uh, to our uh, esteemed colleagues, Senator Padilla, Senator Bongo, Senator uh, Nancy. Uh, good morning to all our uh, resource persons. Magandang umaga po. Um, nagpapasalamat po tayo uh, sa ating uh, chairperson, sa ating Mama Bear Principal, uh, Senator Villar. Uh, for uh, uh, and, and this committee sa kanyang pangunguna sa mahalagang uh, pagdinig na ito na mabigyang pansin at uh, upang mabigyang linaw at agarang tugunan ang krisis na kinakaharap ng industriya ng asin. Uh, the history of salt traces back uh, to as far as uh, 6050 BC. At uh, when the Egyptians uh, used it as a religious offering and to preserve mummies. Uh, in the Bible, we find numerous references to salt, which uh, is usually a metaphor for uh, permanence and uh, conviction. Salt of the earth, a a covenant of salt, etc. Throughout history, salt has uh, proven to be of uh, high value and meaning. 
In fact, the word salary comes from the Latin word so, sal for salt since it was uh, used in ancient Rome as uh, payment. In present day setting, salt has over 14,000 uses and it is an important raw material uh, to produce a great number of products and chemicals. We say all this to emphasize that indeed salt has been and uh, remains to be one of the most important commodities in the world. Now, our country is blessed with over 36,000 kilometers of shoreline, the fifth longest in the world, Madam Chair, suitable for salt making. The Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. Unfortunately, Madam Chair, we have not made full use of the resources that we have, as you have mentioned a while ago. And the uh, salt industry has um, consistently been in decline. It baffles me, Madam Chair, that the Philippines, an agricultural country with shorelines that stretch for uh, thousands of kilometers, would import 93% of our total salt requirements. 93% po ng uh, salt requirements natin, ini-import po natin. Nakakalungkot po ito, sobrang nakakalungkot. Parang sinabi niyo, ho, yung Iceland, nag import ng uh, yelo. In 2021, Madam Chair, our salt exports amounted to only $213,740 US dollars po ito. Meanwhile, sa Singapore po, which has a coastline area of only 193 kilometers or a mere 0.5% of our coastline area, was able to even export about 21.2 million U.S. dollars worth of salt in the same year, Madam Chair. We have an enormous, untapped, and neglected resource that could change the lives of about 60% of our total population who live in uh, uh, coastline zones. Aside from the urgency of addressing the needs of the industry, it is also significant to this representation, Madam Chair, since our home province of Bulacan is the third largest producer of salt next to Pangasinan yung Pangasinan po is asin din po yan pang asinan and uh, uh, occidental mindoro now Mr. madam chair we are very happy that our bill senate bill number 1450 for the salt industry development and revitalization act is among the agenda for today's hearing our bill seeks to revive the salt industry our local salt industry, increase the productivity and income of local salt producers, preserve our local and traditional production techniques, and promote Philippine um, artisanal salt, among others. So we look forward, Madam Chair, to hearing from our resource persons. And again, thank you so much, Senator Villar, dear colleagues, and uh, we hope that uh, uh, we'll be able to... Uh, uh, pass and support this uh, measure as we all continue to work with our uh, Madam Chairman, Chairperson, for the immediate passage of this uh, very important measure. Muli, muli po nating buhayin ang, uh, at pro ang produksyon ng asin sa ating bayan. As in. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you, uh, Senator Villanueva. We wish to acknowledge the presence of DTI uh, Attorney Henaro Jacob of DTI Export and Mr. Gino Ilano, Assistant Director, Export Marketing Bureau of DTI. Okay. And then. Okay. And of course, the Administrator of the Philippine Coconut Authority, Mr. Bernie Cruz. Okay. Thank you. And. Uh, uh, from uh, President of uh, Phil Asin Board, uh, Mr. Carlos Magsino, Phil Asin Board, uh, Amaco Board, Mr. Luis Rafael Santos, and uh, the Salt Industry Board of Pangasinan, uh, represented by Ms. Evelyn. Ano ba yan? Brigera, Brigera. Okay. Oh, that's all. 
Uh, are there any more comments from the senators present? Sinabi niya, gusto niya? So, we assume that uh, only Senator Villanueva will be commenting so we can proceed with our hearing. Okay. Um, who are the resource persons who will be uh, making their manifestation? Uh, we will call on uh, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. Uh, Ms. Attorney Escoto. Madam Chair, uh, distinguished uh, senators, uh, fellow resource persons, uh, guests, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources uh, would like to provide its comment on Senate Bills 1334 and 1450 and Senate Resolution 2011. With regard to Senate Bills number 1334, and 1450, the BFAR supports the provisions of the bills that aim to revitalize the local salt industry and prevent the country's full dependence on imported salt, which is in line with the policy of the state provided in the Fisheries Code of ensuring the promotion and achievement of food security as the overriding consideration in the utilization, management, development, conservation, and protection of fishery resources in order to provide the food needs of the population. While challenges exist in the local salt industry, the ABFAR will continue to address them uh, within its powers and mandates. This bureau recognizes that salt as an aquatic resource is, a very, cru is very crucial to our fisheries industry as it is a major ingredient in fish processing and fish preservation. This bureau louds the above mentioned bills, which will immensely help our local salt production industry. It will provide, uh, it will revitalize the industry, ensure salt, self, salt self sufficiency, provide jobs, and additional revenue for our economy. As to re resolution number 2011, uh, the BFAR support the Senate directive, particularly its prime purpose of initiating new policies and the evaluation of existing measures for the local salt industry to be self-sufficient. The DABFAR is supportive of most of the provisions of the Senate bills and is ready and willing to participate in the technical working group meetings of the committee in further enhancing the proposed legislation. Further, we will submit our detailed position paper, which will incorporate our suggestions and comments on the provisions of the bills after the hearing. Uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair. I just want to ask a question from the BFAR, because I think you are that uh, agency of the government who should be which would which will be concerned with the salt industry, because uh, they are in the waters and you are the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. Because according to write-ups, up, write um, in the 1960s and 1970s, we produced 240,000 metric tons of salt. Okay, Today, uh, we only produce 40, 42,000, which is 7% of the demand. Uh, metric tons of salt. So we have gone down uh, 42,000 against 240,000. 42,000 is just about 15% diba, of what we were producing before. What do you think of that? What happened? Can you enlighten us about that? Uh, Madam Chair, uh... Previously, Madam Chair, uh, before uh, last year, 2022, uh, the, the ABFAR is not actually engaged in, in the salt industry, 
nor in regulating uh, the salt industry. But uh, during our initial meetings, uh, Madam Chair, and in the consultations made, uh, Phil Asin has uh, provided for a detailed presentation, which includes the uh, some analysis on why uh, the salt industry declined uh, through the years. So I think, uh, Ms. Madam Chair, if uh, uh, with, with the indulgence of Madam Chair, I'm just uh, concerned that uh, uh, the Department of Agriculture is not interested on salt. Uh, no matter how I look at it, it's part of the food industry, the right? salt. Uh, we eat salt. Uh -oh. So why are you not concerned with salt? The Department of Agriculture. Why? The findings is that nobody is interested in the salt industry. Uh, but I would think that uh, they said that it's DNR, but the DNR will just give permit to use the shoreline for the salt industry or the land for the short industry. But since it's a kind of food, then the DA should be concerned about the salt. Oh, diba? Oh, kasi nagtuturuturuan na kayo kung sino in charge ng salt industry. I would like to believe that it's the Department of Agriculture. Uh, Madam Chair. Diba? Yeah. Yes. Madam Chair. Senator Bina, we recognize oh, Senator Bina. Yes. Yeah, siguro, Madam Chair, maganda din malaman, sino ba nagbibigay ng ano, import permit for salt? Nanggagaling ho ba ito sa DA? O nagbibigay ng import permit? Eh, well, hindi po sa DA, ma'am. Uh, sino nagbibigay ng import permit for salt? Ibig mo sabihin, walang nagbibigay ng import permit and we can import salt, yes? The FDA in our issues permit for uh, salt importers, iodized salt importers, and salt products. So you are in charge of the salt industry. For the iodized salt po. Ana? Iodized salt for human consumption. Eh, lahat nga, in, ginawa niyong iodized salt eh. Oh, di kayo in charge. Uh, for the so, industry... Nagtataka ako dito sa gobyerno nito. Pag, pag import, nagkakagulo kayo kung sino in charge. Pero pag developmental, walang gustong umamin kung sino in charge. Ba't ikaw ang mag-i-import? Alam mo ba kung ano ang ano ang situation ng supply and demand? Sino ang boss mo na nagsabi sa iyo na ikaw ang mag-issue ng import permit? I'm referring po na sa iodized salt po. Eh lahat nga ginawa niyong iodized salt by legislation eh. Di ba yung legislation, yun yung nag-provide ng iodized salt? Di lahat ng salt is iodized. Madam Chair, if I may. Yes, okay. Kaya Senator po tayo, Villanueva. Thank you, Madam Chair. Una, kaya po tayo nag-file ng bill. Dahil nga po lahat, tama po si Madam Chair, iodized soil, salt. Kaya napakagandang pag-usapan po yan. Maganda yung pinuna ni Senator Nancy. Sino yung nagbibigay ng uh, import permits? Kasi malalaman po natin doon dahil 93% ng ating salt ay ini-import natin. So ibig sabihin talagang merong demand yung salt pero wala tayong produksyon. Nako, mas malaking problema natin kung may produksyon tayo, nag import pala tayo. Kaya siguro, Madam Chair, magandang itanong Pero ayoko sanang iwanan muna yung tinatanong po natin. Sino yung nag... nag, nag uh, Senator Villanueva, it's FDA. FDA ang, daw ang nag-i-issue ng import permit. Okay. E tinatanong ko sa kanila, do they have a knowledge of the industry? What is the supply and what is the exactly. demand? How can they issue import permit if they have no knowledge of the salt industry? Do you have a knowledge of the salt industry as uh, FDA, Mr. Ms. Tuason? On basis ng importation. 
Uh, we're referring po dun sa mga iodized salt po na intended for human consumption. Yeah, lahat nga ginawa nyo ng iodized. <laughs> so, we're referring to salt for human consumption kasi under the law, you made all salt iodized. So, yung pong hindi po iodized salt, hindi Wala po under ng si FDA iodized, po. Eh. Inuhuli nga yung hindi iodized. Hindi nga yun eh. Bawal. O si, paano nyo Ma na determine kung sa ano ang i-import? Uh, only po yung mga uh, iodized salt food products, iodized salt po per se. Na oh, do you know what? What is the iodized yung salt? That's the whole industry, the iodized salt. So don't qualify pa kasi pinalegislate nyo na lahat ng salt iodized. Kaya when you talk of iodized salt, that's the whole salt industry. So how do you determine the importation? Yung pong mga nag-apply lang po sa FDA na may certificate of product registration, yun lang pong allowed na mag-import po ng iodized salt. But, Madam Chair? Ay, Senator Binay. Ah, siguro, maganda kong malaman, ano bang treatment natin sa salt? Is this an agricultural product or ano ba ang classification ng salt? It's for food. So, it's agricultural product. But apparently, Madam Chairperson, parang hindi siya... Uh, and the mere fact that it's uh, being uh, uh, allowed to come in through the FDA, eh, hindi ba yung FDA is food din yun? Yes, ma'am, food din. Food din yan eh. Human grade. Food grade. Uh, siguro, Madam Chair, sinong in charge sa DA for salt? Wala, wala daw. Wala, ma'am, wala. Ah, wala? Wala. Wala. Oh, sa product, ano ba, DTI? <laughs> Madam, yes, Chair, parang, Madam Chair, parang napakalaki ng problema natin talaga sa, sa asin dahil apparently wala sa pamahalaan ang in-charge sa salt. Here from before. Ah, uh, Yes, ma'am. In uh, sometime, ma'am, in uh, 2021, uh, there was a uh, House uh, of Representatives resolution uh, that was uh, issued tasking the Bureau to uh, take charge uh, of uh, uh, salt, salt programs. And uh, uh, because of that uh, resolution, madam, and by virtue of that resolution, uh, a... 100 million was uh, incorporated in Bayanihan funds to uh, to the DA budget, and that was uh, uh, you know directly downloaded from the DA to the different regional directors. But this is the first time in 2022 that such resolution was issued, and that such budget was uh, was uh, was uh, uh, provided. Uh, in in, in Yes, ma'am. In 2023, in 2023, madam, this 2023, we have 100 million uh, budget that was uh, allocated for for salt development program. But uh, everything started uh, only uh, with with uh, from the 2022 Bayanihan funds, uh, madam chair. Uh, madam chair, permission to speak. Yes. Uh, uh, can you introduce yourself? We acknowledge. My name is Gerard Konghun from Il Asin. I would like to try to address the question. So the question is, uh, who issues import permit and what does that look like uh, on the ground in procedure? So when you import, um, there are mostly two kinds of sources of importation. One is from Australia um, and the other is from China. So, who issues the import permit? The, uh, importers that want to import salt will go to the Bureau of Customs and ask for a customs import permit. Yes, uh, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's an import permit so that they can import goods from abroad, uh, including salt. So, conflict of interest yun. Ikaw ang nagpapapasok, ikaw rin ang nag issue na import permit. Yeah. Eh, ba't sinasabi nila sila nag issue na import permit? Okay, I, I will just qualify that. Um, so, the, so the 
So the Bureau of Customs issues an import permit, and then um, importers are required to get certification from the FDA uh, to present that some of that salt will be iodized. When the salt comes in from Australia, it is not yet iodized, uh, Madam Senator. No, when you passed that law, you re demanded that the local salt be iodized. Tapos ngayon, mag import kayo ng salt na hindi iodized. Ano ba yan? Ano ba malaking kalokohan niya? Di sana pinayagan nyo na lang yung local producer na hindi iodized at nirequire nyo na lang na may manufacturer na mag-iodize. Kung ganun din lang ang gagawin nyo na mag-i-import kayo ng hindi iodized tapos i-require nyo ang iodized. Ano ba yan? Uh, why was this law passed? Yeah, so, so, Sino ba ang nag-advise sa Congress na ipas tong salt iodization law na to. Sino ba nagbigay? Ano, sabihin niyo sa akin kung sino ang nag-influence sa Congress na ipas to. Kasi kung mag-i-import din kayo na hindi iodized tapos i-require nyo yung local na iodized, tama ba yun? Sino nag na nag ano nito sa Congress na ipas yan? Ha? Sino nag-influence sa Congress na ipas ito? Pinatay nito ang salt industry eh. Oh. Oh, oh eh bakit nyo pinapatay ang salt industry? When yung i-importin nyo pala, hindi rin iodize, tapos dito rin lang i-iodize. Di sana sinabi nyo na lang na uh, pwede sila mag-produce ng hindi iodize and then ipaprocess na lang to the processor. Bakit pa tayo i-import? Munti mo, nung 1970, 240,000 metric tons ang production na, na natin. Ngayon, ano na lang? 42,000, which is 15% of what we produced before. What insanity is this? This is insanity on the part of the government. <laughs> Ni-require nyo na iodize, tapos ang i-import nyo, hindi iodize. Eh, ba't ganun? Ha? Tama ba yun? Tama ba yun? Ha? Sino nagsabi na ipasa to ng Congress? O nga, sino nag-advise dito? Sino nag-opinion na dapat i-require na iodize? Baka health ito, di ba? Madam Chair, if I may. You, you, you explain. Yes, um, from National Nutrition Council, Ellen Abelia. Um, during the time when the laws being uh, 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 developed or formulated, the level of iodine deficiency in the Philippines was quite high. And one of the identified uh, source or vehicle for iodine that is basically is, that is always consumed or regularly consumed at the household or commonly consumed in the household is salt. So yun po yung nakitang vehicle, best vehicle for the iodine. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, pinigil nyo yung local producer na kailangan mag-produce sila ng iodized salt. Tapos yung ini-import nyo, eh hindi rin iodized, nire-require nyo lang na dito i-iodize. Di ba't hindi nyo rin ginawa yun sa local producer? Ba't nyo nire-require na lahat ng local producer eh mag-iodize? The... Eh ang problema kasi, yung mga farmer, they don't know iodization. So, sana kayo, imbis na nire-require nyo yung farmer not to produce, kayo ang nag-introduce ng iodization sa health tapos ni-require nyo na lahat na magtitinda ng salt, idaan nila sa iodization. Pero you did not prevent the farmer from producing salt. Parang mali ito. Tapos mag import kayo ng hindi iodized tapos eh, pa-iodize nyo lang. Parang ano ba yan? Uh, you want to solve your problem, but you created a bigger problem for the Philippines. Yes, Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, and, and not all salt production is for human consumption. Remember, the fertilizer for the yes. coconut is salt. So, in effect, didn't it deprive nyo yung, uh, yung, ano, yung uh, coconut industry of their source of fertilizer? Yes. Oh, parang mali yung pagka-advise nyo niyan. Dapat, ni-require nyo lang na yung ibebenta sa consumer is iodized. But you should not stop 
you, not, you should not require the whole salt industry to iodize. Tumigil ang mga salt producer kasi yung requirement yung iodization, hindi nila kaya yun eh. Kasi for you to iodize, you have to have a processing. Ano, dapat nag-build na lang kayo ng processing <laughs> instead of stopping the production of salt. Oh, eh hindi naman lahat ng salt for ano human consumption eh. Oh. Uh, nandito yung ano, yung uh, uh, Philippine Coconut Authority. Can you explain to us that salt is a source of fertilizer for the coconut? Okay. PCA administrator Bernie Cruz. Good good morning po, madam. Good morning po, madam chair. Uh opo. Uh I was new to so PCA, po, but uh, there are several uh, visitors who visited me and offering po yung uh, tawag nila is agricultural grade salt fertilizer. Uh, actually, ang coconut, ang natural uh, ano niya is near the sea. So habang lumalayo po sa sa dagat, uh, kailangan po ng salt parang fertilizer niya part ng fertilizer so pag nasa mga mountainous area na po uh, para mag high yield kailangan Pero hindi po kailangan na, so, iodized salt hindi 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 <laughs> po madam sir pinapadala po sa amin oh eh, bakit nila pinara yung salt hindi. production para magkaroon kayo ng fertilizer for coconut remember <laughs> ang laking industry ng coconut sa Philippines. Oh. Madam, Next, Madam Chairperson? Uh, kasi nilaki sila ng rice. Oh. So, pag diniprive mo sila ng fertilizer, you are uh, killing also the coconut industry. Eh, bakit mo i-require lahat eh, i-iodize? Eh, sila daw natural, sugar, nat natural salt ang ginagamit nyo for your fertilizer. Di ba? Oh. Opo. Kung Madam Chair? Ma yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Madam Chair. Binay, can you please uh, uh, let me finish my statement before you intercede? Okay. I, 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 Madam Chair? Preside, okay. Uh, we recognize Senator Binay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Hindi itatanong ko lang ako kasi nabanggit ho ni... From PCA, may nag-offer daw sa kanya ng asin. Imported ho ba yun? Ba't hindi siya pang nagpag-offer? Ano ang question mo? Uh, may nag-offer daw ho ng salt sa kanya for fertilizer? It's Import, a... Im, imported ho ba yung nag-offer sa kanya? Imported ba? Madam Chair, yung uh, nagdala po ng sample doon is from Australia. Oh, Para blocks, blocks po siya, hindi siya yung pino na asin. Okay, so thank you. Now offering uh, uh, salt from Australia to be used as fertilizer by for the coconut industry. Is that what you're saying? Opo, Madam Chair. So do you need uh, salt from Australia? Can you not rely on the salt production from the Philippines? Uh, Madam Chair, ano po, uh, yung aming purchase ng fertilizer is bidded, bidded out po. So whoever uh, gives us the lowest price. And po. if you uh, import from Australia or you help the Philippine salt maker have a market in, in, uh, in the coconut industry as chairman of the Philippine Coconut Administration? Sa, sa amin po, Madam Chair, uh, we would like uh, local, ano, kasi local talaga yung ating... Uh, Promise me that, that you will uh, help the local salt industry to be able to produce salt which you can use as fertilizer for your coconut. Can you assure me that? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam... Madam Chair... Madam Chair. Madam Chair, can I comment? Recognize Senator Villanueva. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, I'm I'm feeling very salty here. Uh, klaro na po siguro na mula nung uh, ipinasay yung asin law 
lalong nag-deteriorate yung ating production ng asin at lalong lumaki ng lumaki ng lumaki ng lumaki ang importation natin ng asin. Before the passage of uh, asin law in the 1990s, correct me if I'm wrong from our resource persons, 85% uh, locally produced po natin. After the asin law, ang pinuproduce na lang natin is 7%. Meaning, nung 1990s, 15% lang ang importation natin ng asin. Ngayon po, 93% na. Madam Chair, I have to say this, I come from Bulacan. Bulacan used to supply 45% of the salt uh, requirement in the country in the 80s. Other provinces that uh, contributed to the country's salt needs include Pangasinan, Occidental Mindoro, and Cavite. Now, our average annual salt consumption as of 2020 is 683,000 metric tons. 683,000 noong 2020. Sabi po ng DTI, at uh, narinig natin kanina yung uh, representative sa coconut industry natin, nung napasa po yung coco levy, uh, RA uh, 1024, sabi po doon, uh, it will create an additional demand of at least 300,000 metric tons of salt per year to supply 300 million coconut trees with adequate salt fertilizer. So, Ito lamang po, it brings the projected total salt demand to 983,000 metric tons or almost 1 million metric tons annually. Tutulungan ko na po yung mga resource persons natin kasi Madam Chair, umiinit na rin yung ulo ko kasi parang pinaghahanda yung mga resource persons natin. Ayo dito, tuwing mag, magkakaroon tayo ng uh, hearing, panay-aral natin, panay-tingin natin sa data, panay-research natin. Ito po, yung comparative salt trade data as of 2021, galing po sa World Bank ito, makikita po natin yung comparative analysis sa iba't ibang bansa. Ang Pilipinas po, uulitin ko, 36,289 ang coastline natin. Napakalaki po. Pero pag tinignan po natin, ang ini-import po natin yung volume, 646 million 686,000 kilograms. Yun po yung ini-import natin. Hindi ba parang nakakahiya po tayo, Madam Chair? Yung Hong Kong, tingnan nyo po, 733 uh, kilometers lang yung coastline nila. Singapore, 193 lang. Since the passage of Asinlo in 95, 1995, gusto nating malaman, ano ba talaga yung ginawa ng DTI? Kasi, Para ang sinasabi natin, Madam Chair, kanina, binabanggit nyo nga, parang wala nang ginawa. Yung DTI, DOH, DOST, Cooperative Development Authority, DENR, isama na rin natin to help our salt farmers. Marami yung kababayan ko na wala ng trabaho eh. Maraming kababayan ko na wala ng hanap buhay. In terms of meeting the requirements of the ASIN law. Kasi makita ho natin dyan, ano ba talaga yung ginawa? Ilang ba yung mechanized equipment? for drying and storage facilities. Ilan yung nagawa po nila. And for so long, dapat nagsalita na sila sa atin sa Kongreso. For so long, sinabi na nila, oh, i-repeal na natin yan. Gawin na natin yan. And again, Madam Chair, that's the main reason why I filed this Senate bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome, uh, Senator Villanueva. Uh, I just want to ask the FDA, how much of our uh, salt demand is for iodization. Kasi hindi naman lahat ng salt demand is for iodization. How much? Out of the one, 600,000 metric tons, ilan ang kailangan iodized salt? I'm sorry, Madam Chair, wala po kaming data. Ng... Ay, paano ka nag-i-issue na import permit na hindi mo alam kung ilan ang so uh, demand for iodized salt? As I said, sir, uh, ma'am po. Uh, ano ba ang head mo? 
Ang head po ng FDA po, uh, si Dr. Samuel Sakate po. Sino? Dr. Samuel Sakate. Tawagan mo siya. Tanungin mo, ano ang basis ng importation of iodized salt? Ano ba ang demand for iodized salt? Para makita natin, out of 600,000, ilan ba talaga ang demand for iodized salt? Kasi dapat, nung sinulat ang batas, inilimit lang doon ang iodization, di ba? O, at pinabayaan sila na mag-produce sila ng raw salt kasi ginagamit sa ibang bagay, hindi naman lahat for food. O, ilan dito ang for iodized salt? Madam Senator, uh, yes. permission to speak. Okay. The uh, out of the six hundred eighty-three thousand tons, about five hundred forty thousand tons will be for salt for human consumption. This will go to the household and the food processing industry. So that's about seventy-eight percent will be for human consumption. So yun pong iayodize po ang kailangan. A business study, it's thirty-six percent. For human consumption. Kasi I think, Iho, you're biased because you are a trader and an importer. So I'm not a trader, ma'am. you make a, 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 an unbiased point of view. Because based on study, it's 36%. Uh, uh, we, are, we, are, we are, ano, um... For other uses, it's 63%. Ito yung study. And I'm yeah. so surprised that you are issuing uh, import permit. You don't know this. You should know this. Because what is your basis for issuing import permit for iodized salt? Oh, it says here one-third is for ano, human consumption and two-thirds for other uses. But when you made the law, you make it all iodization. Who advised them to do that? Kasi usually, pag gumagawa ng law, may nag a na government agency uh, na uh, kung ano ang gagawin. Ito, nag nagulat kami na lahat pinaayodize. Kasi ay kaya yung mga small farmer na hindi naman marunong mag-ayodize, ni-require nyo lahat mag-ayodize, pumara na sila sa pag-produce ng salt kasi hindi nila alam yung iodization. Eh, you have to understand our small farmers. They are not as intelligent, as well educated as you are. And then, sana kung ni require yon, tinulungan sila to do iodization. Wala naman tumulong ngayon. May walang uma admit kung sino ang in charge ng salt industry. Angga ngayon hindi natin. Sino ba in charge ng salt industry? Is it uh, uh, DA? Is it is it BFAR? Is it DNR? Is it Uh, 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 the Department of Health. Sino ba in charge? Wala na nga yung uma-admit kung sino in charge. So you let the whole industry deteriorate by agreeing to that uh, 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 asin law na sabi nga dito sa study, one-third lang ang dapat iodize for human consumption. Two-thirds is for other uses. Bakit ni-require lahat? Anyway, uh, sino ba ang may idea na gusto magsalita after this? Nasaan yung DNR? Where is the DNR? Oh, can you make an opinion on this, on what happened here? You are the land management yes, I... division chief of the land management division yeah. of DNR, and you are the one giving them places to do salt making. Yes, that's yeah. the role of the land management bureau under the DNR. Our mandate is to lease out for sure areas. These are lands adjacent to AND lands or those lands that were titled. Uh, so... During the 1970s, when we produce a lot of salt, you assigned areas to be used for salt making. Di ba? Kayo ang may power eh. Oh. And now, we are just producing 42,000. Is there a difference between the land during that time and the land now allocated for salt making? 
I don't believe there is a difference. But let me clarify the the role of the Bureau of Lands then. Actually, we accept applications. So for sure, po kasi, we give preferential rights to apply to those landowners because these are AND lands, are titled lands. So these landowners... But where they produce the the salt is not titled, uh, are if, not titled yes, lands. There are they cases. Are, uh, we're talking of the... Ano, the shoreline, di ba? O, oh, bakit yes, ngayon ganyan na salita nyo? Eh, yung pong shoreline, they are not supposed to be titled. But oh. the adjacent to the shoreline, the four shoreline, are so A&D land. you can use the shoreline. They if, can uh, use the man. shoreline. Yes. If, they uh, have to lease it oh, out. Oh, yeah. So, so, hindi lahat titled land. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, what I'm saying is, for title owners, for mm -hmm. land landowners, adjacent to this for sure mm. we have to consult them they mm. because under uh, the public land act they have the preferential right to apply for a for sure list so agreement. if they don't want to apply yes ma'am then you can give it yes. to another person it's and just that's have what you call that first option for them because they are near the shore yeah, but if they don't want, then you can give it to others. It can be open to others, but that others should have consulted and get a waiver from the landowner adjacent to that for sure. So, I'm just asking you, is there a difference with the land allocated during that time and during this time? Because our production decreased by from 240,000 metric tons to... Uh, 42,000 metric tons. So, uh, lumiit ba yung lupang pinagagawa ng salt o hindi? Unfortunately, ma'am, I couldn't make a categorical response. What? Because up to now, we do not have a land use act. Which no, would it's have not the land use come act. Up you with give a me to use it. It's but, not uh, the land use act. My Mer God, how you answer me. I'm so surprised. That's why I don't want to do this hearing anymore sometimes. Eh? Because when you answer me, I'm so surprised on how you answer me. But may be blame on land use act. Eh, sinabi mo nang ikaw ang nagbibigay ng permit for them to use them as salt beds. I Tapos, clarify. Ituro mo na naman yung land use act. Alam mo, yung land use Ag. Sasabihin ko sa iyo, baka pinariringgan mo. Kaya hindi ko pinapasayo. Yung land use act is in the power of the local government to determine their land use. They want to transit transfer it to the national government. So it's a conflict between the local government and the national government. And I don't want to be in the middle of the conflict. Oh, kasi pag tinanggal mo yan sa local government, magagalit sa yung local government. Pag dinala mo yun sa national government, hindi naman walang in charge ng land use ngayon eh. Every local government is required to do their own land use plan. Yes. And they give permit on how they will uh, use the land. And we were talking about it during the last administration. And the Department of Finance said, Bakit natin kukunin sa local? Mas alam ba natin kung ano dapat gawin ng mga taga-probinsya sa lupa nila? Kasi mas magaling pa tayo doon, may hindi naman tayo nakakarating doon. Oh, yun ang ano, yun ang conflict ng land use plan eh. Oh, that it's the power is given to the local government. Are we going to get it from the local government and give it to a national agency? That's what I'm asking. Do you think the national agency will be better in implementing the land use plan than the local government? That's my question. Because uh, I don't agree that the national government will be better than the local government. I, I, I want to give that option to the local government. Eh, yun lang naman ang conflict eh. Oh. Tapos sasabihin mo sa akin, humihingi lang ng permit sa'yo to use uh, yung shore, uh, for shore as, uh, as uh, salt bed. Eh, sasabi mo sa akin, dahil walang land use plan, nagbibigay kayo ng permit na eh. How come merong salt production? Kung hindi kayo nagbigay ng permit, di dapat ikaw, as a land management division, inaralan mo, bago ka pumunta dito, ilan ang binigyan yung hectare na permit for salt making, di ba? And then sabihin mo sa akin ngayon, kasi hindi naman ako ang nagbibigay ng permit kayo eh. But sasabihin mo sa akin, ibiblame mo yung land use plan. The power is with you. Oh, nandito. Oh.
Oh, bakit ganyan ang sagot mo sa akin? Sorry, Your Honor. I think I made the uh, wrong answer because I... Pinigay niyong lupa for salt making because the topic is salt making. Oh, kaya gusto ko lang malaman kung mas konti ang lupa ngayon for salt making than in 1970s when we produce more salt. I just want to know. Para paggawa namin ng batas, alam namin what's the reason for the deteriorating salt production? Is it that there are less land for salt making? Or is it that the, the farmer doesn't understand, the farmers do not understand the, the iodization process? That's why they don't want to produce salt anymore because it's illegal if they don't iodize their salt. Oh, eh, tingin ko, combination of many things, kaya nag-deteriorate. Tapos, ito namang law na to, inassume na lahat ng salt is kailangan iodized salt. When based on study, it should only be 30%. One third of the consumption. Oh, bakit nyo ipa-iodize lahat ng salt? Eh, one third lang ang kailangan. Di sana pinroject nyo kung ilan ang kailangan, tapos nilagay nyo sa batas that 30% of the demand should be iodized. So, hindi lahat ng, ng salt farmer eh, tumigil dahil they don't know how to iodize. Diba? Oh. Can you give me a report on how many hectares have you given right for them to use them as uh, salt uh, ano, farms? Yes, Mama. If you would allow us, we will provide you the report. How many hectares were used as a salt farm area? In the 1970s and now. Oh, kasi that was uh, 50 years ago. And then, uh, mas maganda sana before 1998 when we passed this law, kung nagbago yung farms na nagpo-produce ng salt, di ba? Oh, we'll see. Kasi nung i-trace mo yung production from 1970s to 2023, tapos i-relate natin sa area ng salt farms nung ano para malaman natin kung ang reason is nawala yung yung binigyan niyo ng permit or talagang hindi lang sila marunong ng iodization kaya nag-stop sila kasi yun ang theory eh. Pina ni require niyo ang ang mga salt farmers to do iodization and you did not help them to be able to do iodization kasi don't ever think that when you require something, the farmers can do it. That's mechanization already. Eh? That's not anymore farming. Oh, so that you have to teach the farmers. They cannot do it uh, automatically. Okay? Uh, yes, uh, this Senator Binay? Uh, Madam Chair, pwede kong additional submission lang ho. Pakisubmit sa committee, ano ba yung proseso para makahingi ng permit itong mga salt farmers natin para magamit yung lupa for uh, salt production. And part din mo lang sabihin sa nila na kung pwede pakigawan ng mapping, siguro from 1970s, yung kung saan areas may salt production. Nabigyan ng permit for salt production. Thank you po. There is a person online, uh, ano ba to? Corporate secretary ng ano? Salt industry board ng Pangasinan. Okay. There is a person online who is the corporate secretary of the salt industry board of Pangasinan, which is one of the biggest producer of uh, of salt. Uh, the name is Miss Evelyn Bregu Breguera, and we want to get his opinion why. They don't want to produce salt anymore uh, so that we will have an idea what goes in the mind of the salt producer. We recognize uh, Miss Evelyn online. Good morning, po, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone.
on behalf of the president po of uh, Salt Industry Board of Pangasinan, um, I think the reason behind of uh, low production of salt dito na ho sa Pangasinan, particularly sa the salt is uh, the link of the buyers. So kulang kami ng, ng market. At the same time, I think uh, we need to strengthen uh, the production force uh, in order to motivate them to continue the production of salt. And also yung, uh, yung concerning concerning the the iodized salt na sobrang dami na ho yung protection so that probably affect the production of local salt thank you can you explain to us uh, the lack of market we are importing 97% of our salt ano uh, do we have a lack of market if we are importing 93% of our salt demand? Miss Evelyn? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, I apologize to uh, speak for the uh, market. Um, but we will provide you a formal response. Uh, with the with the board board so I think history. that they they stop production because they do not know what is iodization is can they iodize their salt the salt makers of Pangasinan there was a time that FDA approached us for this uh, iodization madam chair but unfortunately uh, we do not have yet on the ground the things the the proper procedures and processing of iodization. Okay. So I would think that there is a demand, except your salt farmers do not know how to iodize and they required every salt uh, every salt production to be iodized. I think that is a better manifestation, Diba. There is a demand but our salt farmers do not know how to iodize, so they stop production. Can you, do you agree with me? I agree with you, Madam Chair, and okay. uh, that's why I, I mentioned earlier that needs to be uh, we need to strengthen the policies and procedures that require the production of iodized salt. Madam Chair, yes. Can uh, you? Hindi ba pwede yung sinusupply ng mga taga-Pangasinan ibigay ho sa Philippine Coconut Authority as fertilizer? <laughs> hindi nga. Hindi nila hinanap ang Philippine Coconut Authority. <laughs> Tapos yung Philippine Coconut Authority, hindi naman siya nag-ikot at sinabi na you can produce salt kasi it became illegal to produce non-iodized salt, di ba? Because of the law. Oh. And they didn't know that the, the coconut can use ordinary salt as fertilizer, diba? There is lack of knowledge. Sana, at tapos, hindi natin dapat pinasa yung iodization of all the salt production because only 30%, one third is for food and two thirds are for other, for other use. Like, for example, as fertilizer for the coconut industry. That's the problem. Uh, the one who wrote the law was not informed that only 30% can be, are used for food. Right. Oh. Uh, Madam Chair, so lumalabas po pala lahat ng fertilizers natin for coconut, imported salt. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If they give out, yes. I would think so. Yes, uh, Mr. Cruz of uh, Philippine Coconut Authority. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, okay, we will uh, we will coordinate po with the local producers from Pangasinan. I think it can be. It will be a good program. After all, I gave you a lot of budget to in yeah. order for you to do fertilizer. You coordinate with the salt producer and buy their salt. 
Oh, because uh, it's not illegal because it's used for fertilizer. <laughs> And yes, uh, the one used for fertilizer is ordinary salt. It's not for human consumption. We'll do so coordinate. You can do a program. Now you help the salt producer have a market for their, ano, for we'll their, ano, are for their salt through the Philippine Coconut Authority. We'll Madam we'll Chair, do, can I comment? Madam Chair, Madam we'll do, Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, yes. Who's, uh, yes, as Senator Villanueva. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Perhaps this would be my last ano lang, intervention. I, I, I'm just so disappointed, Madam Chair, just like you. Uh, I have been listening to our resource persons. Parang di tayo nag-aaral, atin tayong hearing na ganito. And kanina, nabanggit na, Madam Chair, parang ayaw nyo nang tumawag ng hearing, gawin na lang natin itong trabaho natin without calling them. Imagine... Uh, I wanted to move forward, Madam Chair, pero kailangan din natin tignan yung accountability ng ating mga ng ating mga ahensya ng pamahalaan. I am not saying that we should totally abandon salt iodi iodization, no? Because uh, we think the iodized salt campaign, uh, I remember led by then uh, DOH secretary became Senator uh, Juan Flavier, is very popular at uh, kailangan talaga nun. Pero, Madam Chair, sana inaasahan ko ngayong araw na to marinig natin yung nakalagay dito sa Section 6 ng Asin Law. Yung DTI is mandated to support and assist, assist local salt producers and manufacturers in upgrading their production technologies and obtaining loans and financial assistance. Yung Cooperative Development Authority, most likely sila yung dapat nakikipag- uh, coordinate sa ating mga kooperatiba, they are mandated to assist cooperatives to economically engage in salt iodization and distribution. Yung DOSD, tinas to develop and implement programs for the acquisition of salt iodization machines and technology transfer to small and subsistence producers. Yung DENR and other appropriate government agencies, mandated po sila to identify suitable areas for salt farms. So, Madam Chair, kung kanina pa tayo naghihiring dito, hindi natin marinig kung anong ginawa nila, mag-submit na lang po sila ano yung ginawa nila mula nung napasay yung batas. Ngayon, klaro-klaro oh. na it's, it's crystal clear na walang ginawa. Walang ginawa. Bumagsak yung uh, production natin. Tumaas ng tumaas yung pag-import natin ng salt. Uh, nawala ng trabaho at hanap buhay yung ating mga kababayan. Kaya siguro pa Madam Chair, maganda rin mapag-usapan how many Filipinos are employed in the salt industry. Eh, yung DA po, how are they addressing yung reality that most of the small scale salt producers left the industry because of low productivity, low income, increased importation, at pinakamasakit dito, yung narinig natin kanina, nag import pala tayo nung pinagbabawal nung batas na hindi iodize. Eh, pumunta ko kayo sa palengke natin ngayon, sa lahat ng wet market. Bawal yung uh, mga rock salt, yung mga hindi iodize salt. Pero makakabili po kayo lahat dun, kahit bawal yun. Bakit? Eh, kailangan talaga eh. Pero mapibili nyo po, kahit saan palengke dito sa Pilipinas, makakabili po tayo dun. Hindi na nahuhuli yun. Bakit? Eh, kung uhulihin mo naman yun, nakakakawawa naman. Ito ay napakasakit na kapalaran na inabot natin, lalo na kung yung mga nakaupo sa pamahalaan, ganyan lang, walang puso. Walang pakialam kung anong gagawin. Walang pakialam kung magutom. Mahirapan yung mga kababayan natin. Nakakalungkot, Madam Chair. No? Kami kay Senator Robin kahapon, nandun kami sa Migrant Workers Committee hearing. Yung mga resource persons din natin, ayaw din mag-aral. Hindi magsabi kung ano yung kailangan gawin. Tayo lang dito nag-aaral. Pupunta kayo dito, tapos sasabihin nyo, hindi nyo alam kung ilan yung ini-import nating salt. Hindi nyo alam kung ilan yung naapektuan. Hindi nyo alam paano ini-implement yung batas. Ano naman kaming matutuwa sa inyo? Madam Chair, ito na yung huling uh, intervention ko. Ayoko na, nakakasawa na, nakakalungkot. Sana yung PLO man manood at sabihin dito sa mga umaten sa atin, mag-aral naman kayo. Thank you. Uh, Senator Villanueva, 
Maybe we can ask the DTI and the DOST to speak about this. Uh, we call on the representative of DTI. Can you introduce yourself and please uh, give your opinion on what's happening? Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair. Um, Gino Ilano from the Export Marketing Bureau. From our end, we have been consistent. Yes, ma'am. Um, we are importing. Just maybe just. Um, initially, they were looking on the possibility of exporting salt, provided that we we have this thirty six thousand shoreline. So that's why I think we were invited. But what just to help them do iodization by giving them equipment by teaching them how to do iodization and all that what did you do um we'll we'll have to consult with the the bureau in charge ma'am apologies for that nga nagagalit na sa inyo pupunta kayo dito tapos hindi nyo masagot yung question uh he read the law and you're mandated to help kasi ang theory Ni require nyo iodization, hindi nyo naman tinulungan yung salt farmers to do iodization. You're supposed to be the one to help them together with the OSTO. Kasi kayong dalawa ang, ano, tech, because iodization is a technology. It's not the usual job of the farmers. So they have, you have to teach them how to do it. You are DTI and DOST. Oh, so what did you do? To help them under the law passed in 1998. That was uh, 1998, 2008, 20, 23 years ago. Uh, what did you do? From my understanding, Ms. Ma Madam Chair, the regional offices of DTI has been the one coordinating with the different um, salt producers in the different areas. Yeah, ayoko nagbibigay ng pera sa region. Pag nag-regional, ituturo sa'yo, magtuturo-turoan ako sino gagawa. Kaya whenever I write a law, I put the agency in charge. I don't give it to the USEC, the ASEC, and the, the secretary. Because when you're looking for the program or the implementation, <laughs> iyan nga, sasabihin sa'yo, binigay namin sa regional director, hindi namin alam kung ano ginawa nila. Kaya ako, Nila, hindi nyo napansin, binibigay ko sa Filmec, sa Philrise, sa Bureau of Soil and Water Management, yung mga project ko. Hindi ko binibigay sa inyo eh, kasi yan nga isasagot nyo sa akin eh. Binigay namin sa aming ano, tinan mo yung sinagot kahapon, yung pag-distribute ng fertilizer. Binigay na daw sa regional offices, tapos ayo implement ng regional offices. O di, nakatunga nga tayong lahat, walang nag-distribute ng fertilizer. Tama ba yun? Kayo naman, kaya kayo nasa gobyerno, matatalino kayo. Eh, yun nga mga ano, puro may doctorate degree. O, kami nga, walang doctorate degree. But common sense, you tell me what they have done. O, ito, DOST. Ayan, lahat ng nasa DOST, marurunong yan. Science and technology. O, ano ginawa nyo? Yes. Uh, good morning po, Madam Chair. On behalf of our director, uh, Dr. Annabel, um, Ano ginawa niyo to help the yes, salt industry? Uh, I, although I'm new po dun sa division, but I think in early 2000, the Don't OST say already I had, think. Ay, uh, may okay. palusot agad kayo, I Sorry think. Po. Tell me what you yes, have po. done. As early as 2000, the ITD already provided assistance oh. to uh, salt farmers. I think... Oh. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry for the I think. Um, uh, my colleagues provided trainings on salt iodization. In oh. fact, we developed... Provide ka, nagpo-provide ka ng training. Pag nabigay mo na yung equipment, what's the use of giving training when you don't have equipment to operate? Did you yes, give po. equipment? Yes po. Uh, In fact, we... Where? 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 We developed po for processing equipment. Saan nagbigay na equipment? Sa well, as far... Sa specific place. As I have here, ma'am, the map. Mm. Uh, we provided po in... Ilocos. Wait lang po. In, uh, in Ilocos po, in 
Puntol kalinga apayaw uh, in apayaw apayaw po where in apayaw L L G Puntol kalinga apayaw po ano And then Sab sabi mo yung bayan para <laughs> tatawagan namin kung nagbigay yes. nga kayo <laughs> oh yes ma'am I'll provide siguro po, I'll provide you the exact details but uh, what I have here po yung mismong town lang Uh, town? Di sabi mo sa akin ng town. Apo. Pud, puddol. Ano? Pud, puddol. LG of Puddol, Kalinga, Apayaw. Puddol. Puddol. That's Kalinga, P Apayaw. P -O -L. Yes, ma'am. Oh, sino pa? Um, in... Hindi ba shoreline to? Ba't sa bundo ka namimigay? Ma'am, In Occidental Mindoro, oh, we have several. Occidental yes, Mindoro, po. medyo. Opo. Sinabi na sa'yo, the biggest producer yes. are Pangasinan and Occidental Mindoro. Eh, ba't and, ka sa Kalinga namimigay? No, ano po, buntung to eh. Hindi ba sa shoreline to? That's right, ma'am. Tama in, ba yun? Mali in, pa ako? Tama po kayo, ma'am. Oh. In fact, when they requested po the, the, the training and they requested po the... The machine. That's also my question. Oh, kaya nga, saan ka namigay na shoreline? Apo. Hindi ba sinabi na sa'yo, Mindoro and Pangasinan? But I, I would like to correct, ma'am, hindi po kami namigay. I think it's the... The request. The, the request. Oh, wala It kayong binigyan. Hindi, ma'am, meron din po. Pero oh, for that particular, pa Mindoro. Mindoro. In, saan sa Mindoro? Uh, wait po. San Jose in Uh, Lubang in uh, Mindoro Occidental. Yes po. In Mindoro oh. Occidental. San Jose, Lubang. In, in, okay. Yes po. In Atimonan, Quezon. Quezon. In Lobo, Batangas. Ano? Batangas. Whole Batangas? No po. Lobo, Batangas. Uh, in Palawan. In Sambuanga. Saan sa Palawan? I, I still need to check where... Hindi, kasi checkin yes, namin yes, yung LGU, tatanungin namin yes, kung ano ginawa nyo eh. Apo. Palawan, Palawan, no? Saan sa uh, Palawan? I'll still need to check where in Palawan. In fact, nahandun na po yung machine. Uh, baka po this... Palawan? Yes. Ang laki ng Palawan? Yes, ma'am. I, I still need to check po. I don't have the exact address yet. Uh, kasi po, nasa isang division po yung may hawak. But oh. we will provide you that, ma'am. And, And then, then, in Santa Cruz, Sambuanga, in Guimaras, uh... In Carida, uh, Atimonan, Quezon, in Dasol, Pangasinan, in Infanta, Pangasinan. Uh, Teka, dahan, dahan. Ay, sorry po. As, yes, ma'am. Ano, anong Pangasinan? Infanta, Pangasinan. At saka yung isa, Dasol? Dasol, Pangasinan. Oh. Yes, oh. In Mindoro, another one is in Pag-asa. Uh, Mindoro, San Jose, Lubang, yes, and Pag-asa. No, pag, that's, that's also in San Jose. That's, the, the name of the cooperative is Pag-asa. Tama po, sir, no? Pag-asa, Pag it's po. also a big, big you producer of salt. You gave an official list of yes, whom you help, what did you give, yes, po. and what tra training do you have? Para naman, yes, uh, may, meron naman tayong, ano, dapat kayo, at saka DTI, tawagan mo yung DTI at sabihin nyo, sus Maria, yes, sabi, huwag kayong sasagot sa akin na I think, I know, I think, I know. We should be exact when we're saying this kasi para-paraho naman tayong pumupunta sa hearing. Tanungin mo sa staff ko, pag maghihearing ako, one week before nag-aaral na ako. Kasi hindi ko naman alam yung industry na yan eh. And then suddenly we will hear it. So I have to study also. Kayo mas alam nyo yan kasi yan ang trabaho nyo eh. Tapos pagdating dito sasabihin nyo sa akin hindi nyo alam yung ginagawa nyo. Parang hindi logical yun eh. Oh. So... Maybe we should postpone the hearing and we will give a chance to this agency to study and then uh, to, ano, ikaw iha sa FDA. Sabi mo sa akin kung ano ba talaga kasi according to study, 30% lang ang, ano, ang demand for, ano, yung, what you, iodized salt. 63% for other uses. Kasi, para i ano na i amend namin yung law na sabihin namin na hindi lahat ia iodize only the demand for iodize and then they are free to produce and then maybe we can estimate what the coconut industry and we can uh, 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 
provide for the development in the coconut industry of uh, raw salt, di ba? Oo. So, ano, kasi we are going to amend the bill. So, baka magkamali na naman tayo, katulad nung nagkamali nung 1998. Huwag naman tayo magkakamali kasi namamatay ang industry. Oo, hindi pwede tayo nagkakamali. And then, let's decide for ourselves, sino ba in charge? Oo. Oh. O oh, ilalagay ko doon na ano na very definite ano gagawin ng BFAR, ano gagawin ng FDA, ano gagawin ng DOST, ano gagawin ng DTI. Ano ano ang role nyo sa anong sa industry na ito? Dapat maliwanag kasi nagkakagulo tayo eh, nagtuturo-turuan na tayo eh. Oh. So, uh, there are many private sectors who are here. Uh, if you want to speak, please raise your right hand. Madam we, Chair. We, yes, uh, Senator Chair. Pinay. Ne, gusto ko lang marinig ko from sa Nutrition Council. Kailangan pa ba ng ano, i-iodize? Kailangan pa ba sa batas? Isa batas itong iodized salt? Um, uh, we recognize the... Uh, Nutrition Council, uh, Mr. Armu Armund Argel, yes, tama ba ako? Yung bang Nutrition Council, o oh, ikaw uh, ang representative? Yes, uh, Ellen uh, Abella, Abella, Abella yeah, from okay. the National Nutrition. Um, to respond to uh, Senator Binay's question, um, actually for the National Nutrition Council, we are, we, we really support the the two bills that will strengthen or to help our local salt industry. Ang question niya, yes. do we really need to provide in the bill the iodization? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, just to, for context, Madam Chair, um, we want to sustain the health impact of the salt yeah, iodization the, program. The problem with the bill is they required everything to be iodized. And, and dapat yata, ginawa nyo noon, imbis na i-require the whole industry to iodize, nag na lang kayo ng uh, iodization effort. Oo. Para hindi na matay yung industry. Kasi yung farmer talaga, salt maker sila. Yung iodization is, ano, is uh, manufacturing, di ba? Processing. So, it's really hard to ask the farmer to process unless you have a program ng processing. Dapat nung ni-require nyo farmer do, may programa kayo ng processing, binigyan nyo lahat ng cooperative ng farmer ng, ano, ng equipment for them to process their ano, before and you gave them time to learn before you required in the law. Ganun yun eh. Hindi, katulad ko, I'm promoting... Uh, mechanization. I don't expect that during the first year the rice farmer will mechanize. It will take time. That's why yung law is six years for them to mechanize. So, hindi mo pwede sabihin sa akin that we require the farmers. They're not processor. Ma Madam Chair? Yes, uh, Senator Madam Binay. Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, oh. hindi, siguro gusto, gusto ka lang malamit kasi diba yung rational nung asin law kasi may problema tayo sa goiter. Pwede mo bang marinig kung gaano ka... May problema pa ba tayo sa goiter to begin with? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, if I may be allowed to respond. Um, sa iodine deficiency po kasi, it's not only the goiter. We also consider the uh, the effect or yung health impact po of iodine deficiency. Tinuruan nyo mga estudyante niyan, hindi nyo ni-require yung salt producer to iodize. So, Tinuruan nyo mga estudyante na para mawala yung inyong iodine deficiency, dapat iinom kayo ng ganito, ganito gagawin nyo. Dapat ganun yun eh. O, ang ginawa nyo, pinatay nyo yung salt industry, that's your solution. Eh, Madam Mada Mada Chairperson, siguro ano ba yung percentage ng iodine deficiency natin ngayon? Oh, what is daw the percentage of children with iodine deficiency? Right now po, based on the result of the most recent National Nutrition Survey, the uh, the uh, yung population group po with iodine deficiency are the lactating women, the pregnant women, and the elderly. Oh, how many percent of the population? Um, there's 12 point... Wait, ma'am. 
uh, I think, uh, wait, will access po. Uh, for the lactating women, it's more than 20% of the population of the lactating women. Lactating women. Uh, it's the, the general population, percentage of the general population kasi bi, hindi naman lahat ng population ay lactating women. Madam Chairperson, tsaka diba pag lactating women, hindi naman ata, diba may iniinom na gamot, hindi naman yun nakukuha sa pagkain ng maraming iodine salt? Um, ang marker po kasi natin for iodine deficiency are are the children. So, uh, 36. So, for the children, we have a uh, 12% na lang po ang ang level yung pong level of deficiency for pregnant or for the for the adults saka pag lactating woman ka di ba inaalagaan ka ng doktor yes po uh, for pregnant kailangan patayin mo salt industry para alagaan hindi, ng lactating uh, women hindi naman po yun yung well the oh, original eh, bakit nyo ni require na lahat ng salt e eh, iayodize eh, sino naglabi sa inyo the the original ako may feeling ako may naglabi sa inyo yung importer ng iodized salt uh, tingin ko Kasi ko ako yan, hindi ko i-require lahat. And Madam Chairperson, siguro kung 12% na nga lang yung may iodine deficiency, baka technically, hindi na ho talaga kailangan na lahat iodine so pwedeng available sa market. You're correct, Madam Senator. But... Saka ako, walang nagsabi sa akin na kailangan kumain ako ng iodized salt. Yung doktor ko, sinasabi nila, uminom ako ng gamot. <laughs> Hindi ako sinasabihan na kumain ako yun ng iodized salt. Nagulat ako dyan eh. Kasi that's really bad. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, continue po. Oh, uh, you continue. Yes. The original intent of the law was not to kill the salt but industry. But you required yes, everybody. Do you understand the farmer? Bago maturuan ng mechanization niya, ng hirap-hirap, kasi hindi naman sila sanay dun eh. Oh, ako nga, six years yung Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. At yung four years namin, ang improvement namin, ilang percent, five percent, or yeah. Ini-expect ko na yun eh, kasi mahirap magpabago ng sistema ng isang lugar. Kayo, dinaan nyo sa law. Pinatay nyo by that law. Pinatay nyo. Mahirap magturo sa farmer. Oh, hindi hindi naman sila hindi naman sila talaga akma sa mekan sa processing. Talagang hirap na hirap kami para turuan sila na mag-processing. Oh, mahirap. Alam mo ba na ginagawa namin sa agriculture eh tinuturuan namin silang mag-processing para halimbawa yung rice nila hindi na pala ay gagawin ng bigas para sila na rin na magtitinda ng bigas sa mga consumer para mura. Kasi pag idinaan pa sa trader tapos may cartel, eh, ikukontroli ng supply tapos magkikreate ng artificial demand tapos mamahala ng halaga. Ayaw na namin noon. Kaya gusto ko yung farmer, dumiretso na sila ko sa consumer para lahat ng kita kanila tapos dadating sa consumer na mura. Hindi madali ang magturo ng mechanization at processing sa farmer. It's taking us a lot of time. But pinagtsatsagaan namin yun kasi that's the solution really to the high cost. It's for them to mechanize and to process. Para wala nang daan na middleman, sila na lahat. And then yung co-op na rin nila magdadala sa consumer. Yun ang intention doon eh. Kasi talagang lumalabas na yung value chain ang may problema. So, ikaw, by requiring them to iodize, pinatay mo na rin yun kasi hindi nila kayang mag-iodize ng ganun-ganun lang. If you are requiring them to iodize, dapat nagawa ka ng program over a couple of years na may program ang DTI at saka DOST at saka 
whoever will be in charge to distribute the equipment and to teach them iodization and it will take several years for them to learn but to require it right away sa law pinatay mo na yon atay na yon hindi nila kaya yon hindi nila kaya yon ma'am yes. permission to present ma'am yes uh, can you uh, uh, been listening uh <laughs> that uh, we brought a, a video a few minutes of your time just to watch this uh he is uh, international uh, yes Introducers. okay sorry uh, my name is Johnny Konghun uh, in fact uh, I've, I witnessed all of these uh, things since 19 of the Philippine Asin the problem with Philippine Asin you are the trader and the importer how can you be uh, uh, not affect uh, what you can na magpipresent pa kayo dito eh kayo yung trader at importer na nakikinabang sa importation of Madam uh, Madam Senator we are not uh, traders or importers we are the producers we are the 7% You are the 7% We are the 7% but I read Well we are the 7% ma'am uh, where is where do you produce Pangasinan? Pangasinan po. Oh. And our colleague from Mindoro. And uh, just to address the issue of Do we have a cooperative of farmers here? Oh, yeah. I CDA. Tawagin na. Kasi I cannot believe that that uh people like you would be the ordinary farmer who are affected by this uh mm -hmm. you are you are the ones who buy from the farmers you don't produce the asin we are a producer ma'am we have a company producing the asin we have a company producing asin pacific farms incorporated is based in bolino you are not the co-op of uh salt farmers one of our members is the co-op in mindoro the tamarao salt producers cooperative Oh, where are they? Dito po, sa kanan niyo po. Kayo ang co-op. Kasi yung co-op no isang araw eh, sila nagbenta sa FTI nung onion sa 537. <laughs> Kaya ako nawo-worry na ako do sa mga co-op. Alam mo, dun sa rice, ang kasabuhat ng trader, co-op. Tapos na demanda sila nag pa yung co-op sa akin at ako ang nagbigay ng pang ano nila, ano yun, pag nagkakakaso. Ako, ako nagbayad ng bail nila kasi iniwanan na sila nung trader eh. Oo. Oh. Kaya sinasabi ko doon sa co-op ng Onion doon sa uh, Nueva Ecija eh. Sabi ko sa iyo, mag-ingat ka, baka mamaya, na-demanda na sila eh. Ombudsman. Oo, oh, na-ombudsman na sila. Ikaw maiiwan dyan, iiwan ng kanyang FTI. Iiwan ka. Kasi yung kasabuhat nila nun sa rice, eh, iniwanan nila eh. Tapos nag sa akin, ako nagbayad ng, dima ng ano nila eh. Piyansa. Ng piyansa nila eh. Kaya, let's be careful about this. So. What's the CDA? Let's ask the CDA. Uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, Ma Madam Chairman, Senator, uh, magandang umaga po. Magandang umaga sa lahat. Uh, we are the Cooperative Development Authority and the uh, our role in the uh, our role in the implementation of the asin law yung pung 9184 i to assist the uh, farming the salt uh, producers cooperatives to organize themselves into cooperatives uh, during that time po, mga early 90s may mga natulungan po tayo na nag it into organizing themselves into cooperatives uh, but today po medyo uh, Komonte na rin po sila, pero there are still uh, those who, who are operating. In the area po ng uh, Region 4B, uh, and uh, yung Pangasinan po natin, uh, unfortunately, medyo hindi na nag-ooperate, but we are uh, still uh, visiting them po para uh, makakita ng pamamaraan kung paano po sila i-revitalize. Meron din pong uh, cooperative from Region 7. So, meron po kaming listahan noon, uh, Ma'am Chair, and we can submit this to the committee. As well po, meron po kaming daladalang uh, position paper ngayon uh, with regards to your uh, Senate Bill 1334 and uh, 1450. Uh, 
uh, in support to your uh, advocacy po on uh, SALT. Maraming salamat po, ma'am. Maraming salamat po and uh, and uh, Mindoro. There is sila yon, Tamaraut Salt Producers, Mr. John Arnold Duque of Mindoro. You're the one, di ba? Okay, can you speak? Ma'am, can I... Uh... Nawo-worry ako pag co-op eh, naka ano, <laughs> nakasuot <laughs> ng ano eh. Hindi po kayo kapitan. Parang mayayamang co-op to. Hindi to yung co-op na umiiyak sa akin. <laughs> Nawo-worry ako sa inyo. <laughs> Ma'am, if you will allow us Very to share. Very nice the Tamarawan salt producers of Occidental Mindoro. Ma'am, thank you for allowing us to share. Uh, Isi-share lang po namin, ma'am, yung experience po namin through the years as a cooperative. Na kami po ay nabuo in uh, 2010. Yung pun time na yun, ma'am, sa totoo po, kaya po kami nabuo is because the industry of Mindoro was really dying. Nahirapan po kami and I would like to agree po sa maraming mga nasabi niyo po kanina, katulad po ng sabi ni Sen Senator Binay, and sabi niyo po with regard to iodization, I'm going to state a few things that helped us recover. Number one, ma'am, because we work together as a co-op, talaga pong nag-band kami sa Mindoro. There was a time in 2010, ang asin po ng Mindoro hindi po nakalabas ng Mindoro, ma'am. And true enough, uh, we, found, we tried to find a way na makalabas po itong asin na to. Naidaan po namin ito sa Philippine Coconut Authority. We help facilitate that. Uh, if you will look it up, it's in the record. The yeah. raw salt, po, ma'am. Um, actually, ma'am, dahil nga po talagang hirap kami, naghanap kami ng way na mai magawa ng pagpapasahan ng asin namin sa Mindoro. That is the one way para maka-survive kami at that time. So, we are very thankful na allow po kami ng PCA na makapasok po sa kanila at that time. However, there are still, of course, there are issues na if given the chance na makasama po kami with technical working groups, we feel na mas mapapalakas pa po natin yung bond between the producers and the, and the government agencies that can purchase the locally produced salt. So, um, we 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 went through the bidding process, po, ma'am. Yes, po, ma'am. Yes, po, ma'am. Uh, with regard to non-food grade, po, pwede naman po talaga may may send. Meron po, ma'am, basta hindi po food grade. Uh, with regard naman po dun... ...sumption ng Philippine Coconut Authority. Sabi nila 300,000 metric tons. Magkano, ilan ang naibenta nyo sa Philippine Coconut Authority? At that time, we... 120,000 bags at 50 kilos, which is... Region 1 to 6,000 tons po, ma'am. Ano? 6,000 tons po, ma'am. 6,000 tons. At magkano? Oh, that was very low, ma'am. In fact, the government was able to save 20 million. Kami at that time for survival, we only wanted to bring the salt out of Mindoro just for our industry to survive. Can you give me a write-up of what happened during the... Meron po, ma'am. We will... It was in 2010. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can you give me a write-up so that when we amend the law, we will have a, an idea? Kasi, alam mo, minsan, uh, you, there's a desire for you to amend the law without consultation. Eh? Kasi, <laughs> uh, it's really a, a lot of headache to do consultation. But uh, we, we just go through with it so we don't make a mistake. So, so, 
So can you give us a write-up of what happened during that time? So we will be guided accordingly on what to do. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Thank yes, you ma very much. Uh, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, permission, per permission to speak, ma'am. Madam Chairperson. Madam, Madam Senator. Sino yun? Ako po. No, no. Uh, uh, Senator Binay and then Se Ms. Dr. Fausto. Okay. Uh -huh. Madam Chair, hindi, tatanong ko lang, after 2010, hindi na sila nakasupply sa Philippine Coconut Authority? Up to when kayo nagsupply sa Philippine Coconut Authority? Nakapagtuloy po kami mga several more years, about two or three more years. Of course, meron po kasi ma may mga times may challenges when... No, uh, how did you survive after that if you're not selling to the Philippine Coconut Authority? Did you do iodization already? Ma'am, with regard naman po do sa iodization... Um, I can safely say na merong mga ilan po sa probinsya na nakakapag-iodize na po. The, Who helped you? Uh, DOST po, natulungan po nila kami. Uh, meron naman po silang program na tuloy-tuloy pong pumupunta sila sa amin. Selling anymore to the Philippine Coconut Authority? Where did, where, to whom did you sell? Marami na po kasing uh, the nice part with when we did yung Lumabas po kami, pinadala po namin sa PCA. We also tried to find markets para ngayon po nakakarating na sa Mindoro yung mga ibang mga buyers ng asin na, na, nalaman na po, hindi na big traders lang ang nakakarating sa amin. How do you sell your salt to them? Ano na, raw? Or, Not iodized? Uh, some of which, ma'am, we sell it iodized. Some of which, raw na po. So, parang nag-circonvention din rin, hindi ba? Yung nagawa na kayo ng sarili niyong strategy. Yes, ma'am. Hindi kayo nakinig sa batas. Um, <laughs> actually, ma'am, meron, meron po... Totoo yun. When you are a businessman, there are times na gagawa ka na ng paraan at eh, ano, kaysa mamatay ka. Yes, ma'am. Meron na pong mga traders that uh, have their own iodizing machines and they have their own permits na... Okay kung kailangan po nila i-travel because it's very hard po to travel in Mindoro. We are on an island. So it's very strict. We really have to comply kung ano po yung ano. Kayo kayo din yung ano eh. All in eh. Tapos gayo na naman yung salt. Parang lahat ng negosyo sa inyo namatay, pinatay. Diba? Pinapatay. Kawawa naman kayo. Dapat pala kayo mamahalin ko eh. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Pinibida ko kay Senator Villar yan. Eh. Sabi niya, where are the congressmen? They should fight for their ano, constituents. Hindi ba yun ang trabaho ng Congress to fight for you? Oh, dapat hindi pumayag sa iodization yung mga congressmen niyo. Kasi basic ano niyo pala yan. Basic niyo na ano yan. Yung, ano, yung, uh, yung salt. Kayo eh, onion and salt, di ba? Kayo ang biggest, kasama ng Pangasinan, kayong dalawa ng Pangasinan, ng partner, di ba? Yung mga nag-iiyakan dito ka nung lunes eh, taga Pangasinan, at saka taga Mindoro eh. O, oh, kawawa naman kayo. O, oh, pero kayo mukha mga pogi kayo eh. Hindi kayo yung maghihirap sa Mindoro <laughs> Kasi yung nag-iiyakan dito eh, mukhang naghihirap talaga eh. O, oh. Kayo eh, mga pogi kayo eh. Kaya nawo-worry ako katuloy kung totoo sinasabi nyo sa akin. Hindi, <laughs> <laughs> isusulat naman nila eh, di ba? No, I really want to help you. Oh. Kasi ako, maliit akong ano tawag dito. Nagsimula din kaming maliit na na negosyante, napakahirap ng maliit na negosyante. Talagang you have to survive in this world. Oh, mahirap. Madam, Madam Chair? Yes? Siguro maganda malaman, magkano ba pwedeng kitain ng salt farmers? Actually, ma'am, with regard to yung kita, it's, it's really dependent on the scale. Uh, yun, yun po kasing katulad nung, just to explain lang, dun, babalik ko lang ma'am doon sa iodization. Ano. The reason why iodization is very challenging is because you need scale to be able to iodize. Tama po yung sinasabi niyo, Madam Chair, ano, na we have several salt farmers. We have sizes of salt farms from uh, fairly small to small 
to uh, medium, yung big po sa atin, actually considering Australia and China is still very, very small. So sa atin, ang kaya lang mag-iodize yung medyo, I can say, big or medium scale. The cooperative... Ma we are building co-ops because yes, yung small farmers, you organize them into co-ops, then they have the economies of scale, yes, diba? For mechanization. Kaya kami, yung mechanization program ng DA, always through the co-ops. Kasi hindi naman pwede natin ibigay yung machine sa small farmer kasi hindi naman niya ma-justify yun at mahal yun. Oo. Kaya... Kahit na tatlumpung farmer magtayo ng co-op kung 2 hectares each, that 60 hectares, at least may economies of scale na yun. Pwede mo nang bigyan ng machine for the uh, processing and mechanization. So, uh, magkano halaga? Magkano halaga ng salt talaga? Cost of salt per kilo? Um, farm gate say say ma'am if uh, if salt is purchased today at uh, say 3 pesos per kilo give or take 70 or 80 percent of that is uh, nagagamit po sa cost uh, from repairing of dikes yes po ma'am dependent pa po yun kung magiging maganda po yung ani for the year because like the last four years it's been a la nina year so it's been very challenging for us the last four years. Raw salt, ma'am. Pag inayodize mo, magkano ko ibebenta? Actually, ma'am, hindi naman po kami makakapagpatong ng malaki even if we iodize. We just add the cost of iodization to that cost. Say, for example, if the iodization cost is about, uh, is it 15 to 20 pesos, we just add that to the, for 15. 50 kilo bags, let's say 3 pesos per kilo is 150, we just add uh, 15 to 20, so it's about 165, 170 pesos. Wala pang piso ang Wala iodization? Pang... Wala naman po, ma'am. Magiging yung 3 pesos, 350. Yes po, ma'am. But the challenge there, ma'am, is for the salt producers, very expensive po yung mga machines. And aside from that, the technology transfer is a problem. I could have uh, written a law na magbibigay ang filmic ng machine ng iodization. And that's the job of POST and DTI. They have also a processing project. Oh. Hindi, hindi, hindi problema yun eh. Lalo na kung co-op, hindi problema yun. Sa amin, lahat ng co-op binibigyan namin ng ano, machine. Oh. That's the only way we make our agriculture competitive. Oh. I remember I went to, that. that's where I got the idea of farm school in France. I was invited by the Association of Farm Schools in France. And sabi ko, eh kung France nga, first world country, libo ang farm school, bakit ang Pilipinas walang farm school na magtuturo sa farmer? Eh agricultural country. So when I went home, I wrote the farm tourism law which provided for farm schools in every town in the Philippines. Tapos nung mapas ako batas, ang unang tinanong sa akin nung may-ari ng farm, ma'am, ano ba yung farm school? So I had to build one para sabihin ko sa kanila na meron ako, punta ka doon, tingnan mo kung paano yung farm school. So I have four farm schools around the Philippines. One in Las Piñas, one in Bulacan, one in Iloilo, and one in Davao City. Because I want to teach. Oh. And then when I was going to these farms in France, I met one. Ang kanilang farmer is ano, a wheat farm. Kasi bread sila, hindi sila rice, eh. wheat farm. And I met this farmer na may 100 hectare wheat farm. Sabi niya sa akin, pinamana daw sa kanya ng magulang niya kasi yung dalawa niyang kapatid, eh, nag-lawyer at yung isa ay eh, nag-CPA. Eh, pumunta sa Paris, siya na iwan. So sa kanya, pinamana, siya nag-aalaga ng kanyang parents. Tapos sabi ko, how many employees do you have in your farm? Kasi 100 hectare. Sabi niya, I'm the only one. I'm fully mechanized. O, okay, kita mo na. 100 hectare, walang empleyado, fully mechanized. That's gave, that gave me the idea 
Now we have to do mechanization, but we cannot have 100 hectare wheat farm owned by one person in the Philippines. That's against the land reform. So doon ko binigyan ng pera ang CDA para mag-form ng co-op. Tapos yung economies of scale natin sa co-op, kaya kayo, kayo ang example ng co-op. Di ba? Co-op kayo? Oo. Oh. Kayo ang example. And when you are a co-op, the Filmec is mandated to give you free equipment. Para walang investment sa equipment. So you can mechanize. Oh. Lahat ng batas na sinulat ko, I authorize Filmec to give free equipment. Para sa rice farmer, yung pagtatanim mechanized hanggang pag, pag ano, milling. And then sa others, processing. Para bi, pag binabarat kayo ng trader sa inyong harvest, i-process nyo at ibenta nyo yung process. Kaya ginawa ko yung ano, yung San Jose Batangas, the El Capital of the Philippines. Alam mo ba, nung hindi nila maipagbili itlog nila, ginawa nilang powdered egg. Meron palang powdered egg sa Philippines eh. Binebenta nila sa mga kumpanya na gumagamit ng egg. Sabi ko, eh ang galing naman itong mga egg farmer na to para maisip nila yung powdered egg. Kasi daw nabubulok, walang bumibili. Ginawa nilang powdered egg. Nag-process sila. O, di ba matalino? Di ba nakakatuwa? Ha? Ana? From DOST. Yes, pa, o, thank you. O, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, at least may accomplishment kayo. Pin Dineclare ka yung egg capital of the Philippines kasi nagulat ako na they produce powdered egg. Oh, kasi daw hindi mabili yung egg nila. Nabubulok eh. Ginawa nilang powdered egg. Oh. So, that's the model. Kaya tayo nagaganito. So, we will have a model of what can be good for the farmer and at the same time for the consumer, di ba? Oo. Oh. Oo. Oh. Ganun talaga eh. Tayo naman lahat, maliit na negosyante. Alam ko buhay nyo kasi nagsimula din ako maliit na negosyante. Oo. Oh. Ang una kong negosyo, nag, uh, ano eh, nag, uh, nag, gravel and sand. May dalawa kaming truck. Tapos ako nagpapabaon, araw-araw eh, niloloko ako nung akin truck driver. Oo. Oh. <laughs> Kaya pag niloloko ako ngayon, huwag niyo ako lolokohin, sanay ako sa truck driver. <laughs> Hindi kayo uubra sa <laughs> Araw-araw nahuhuli ng pulis. Araw-araw eh, nagpapa, ano ba yun? Yung ano, vulcanizing. Pag nabangga ang truck, sigurado kasama ang girlfriend sa truck. Oh. Alam ko lahat yan. Kaya nung bumabata ko, sabi, sabi ko sa iyo, siguro meron kang inspiration na bata. Kaya ka bumabata. <laughs> we recognize Mr. Dr. Fausto. Thank you. Maraming po salamat, Madam Chair, uh, uh, sa pagkakataon. Ano niyo po itong uh, after 27 years, ito pong asinlo, talagang overdue na na ma-amend. At isa po sa objective ng Senate Bill 134 is to increase the salt farms. Kaya... Ang, ang ngayon po, nasa 2,000 hectares po yung salt farms natin. Kailangan po natin 19,000 hectares para maging sufficient. 2,000 po, according to the producers. 2,000. Eh, kailangan po natin 19,000. Kaya siguro po, Madam Chair, kailangan po siguro eh, i-facilitate natin yung pagbigay ng permit at pag-identify ng mga salt farms. Yung uh, pagbigay ng posture list ng gagaling sa DNR, pagpapatakbo naman ay BIPAR, at ang permit naman ay kasama yung LGU at saka yung FDA, kailangan mo siguro i-harmonize. At isama sa proposed salt industry development council, yung DNR, sila po yung exclusive power na magbigay ng posture list. Pinibigyan nila ng priority yung mga kapitbahay ng lupa. E paano po kung ang salt farmers, eh, hindi po tigaron at uh, uh, ma-encourage natin ang investment. Kaloba po, yung sa presyo, competitive naman po yung local price dahil yung to, 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 ang, ang landed po ang sabi nila is 450 to 5 pesos. Ang cost naman nila nasa 250 to 3 pesos. Mm. So, makakalaban. Sa palengke po ngayon, ang presyo po ng isang kilo nasa 20 pesos po yung natural salt, tsaka 22 yung iodized salt. 
sa supermarket 38 ang isang kilo. Wow. Wow. Kaya maganda po ang kita nila. Kaya makakalaban yung ating farmer. Tungkol naman po sa Philippine Coconut Authority, kung masasakop po na sa Gipsakalo yung, yung ating salt farms, eh hindi na po kailangan ng bidding yan. The PCA can buy directly without bidding at a price that is uh, low. No? Uh, hindi po mahirapan ng ating mga farmer. Kailangan po natin i talaga i-harmonize yung FDA. Kailangan po natin ng ayodin pero yung mga yes, yung mga production po natin hindi naman kailangan lahat ng ayodin. Eh yun po ang maano namin, yung amin pong mga member sa nagrereklamo dahil yung imported snacks, yung mga chichirya, uh, yung mga noodles na i-imported binebenta sa supermarket, hindi po gamit iodized salt yung imported. Pero kapag ang local manufacturer natin ang gagawa, bebenta sa supermarket, kailangan ayodize ang gamit nila. Eh yun naman po ang ating mga exporter ng snacks. Eh ayaw pong tanggapin sa ibang bansa yung kanilang produkto pagka ayodize salt ang gamit. Dahil sabi ng ibang bansa, eh treated at fortified yung, fortified yung uh, produkto. Ayaw pong bilhin yung produkto. Yung recommendation ng, ano, ng DOH, mali? Eh, ang kanila po, yung iodine. Eh. Uh, sa sinabi niyo po kanina, lahat po, eh, dapat iodine. Pagka hindi iodized salt, eh, illegal. So, hindi po mabigyan ng permit. Uh, dahil illegal, ang LGU, hindi makapagbigay ng permit. Eh, hindi ang, ang BIPA. Allowed yun. But sa ang foreign, pumapasok, yun po yun. ang reklamo ng aming mga member na, yung mga imported snacks at saka mga noodles, hindi ayuday salt ang gamit pero nabebenta sa supermarket. Yung anim pong locally produced, eh hindi mabenta kung hindi ayuday salt ang gamit. At hindi po tayo makapag-export dahil yung mga foreign uh, buyers, ayaw po yeah. nila ng ayuday salt uh, kasi treated daw at fortified. So, walang competitiveness yung ating export products. Yan po ang problema natin, Madam Chair. Salamat po. Can, can you uh, ano that? Can you make a, a report on that written report so Will that you can refer it to this, ano, this uh, FDA natin? Oh, Will do, ma'am. Parang may conflict yan. Diba? Pag foreign, pwede. Pag tayo, hindi pwede. Ano yan? Ay. Madam Chair, Ma 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 Madam, Chair? Po. Madam Chair? Yes, Senator oh. Binay. Oh, di ba ka pwede din paki-expound? Bakit hindi bakit ayaw nung ibang bansa na 45? Kaya nga I'm asking the FDA to explain to us why that conflict na pag foreign eh hindi iodized salt, pag local iodized salt o. And tapos so hindi rin tayo maka-export kasi ginagamitan natin ng iodized salt yung product natin. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Uh, to clarify lang po, uh, FDA is a regulatory agency. So, kung ano lang po kasi yung nasa, nakasaad sa batas, yun lang din po yung aming guideline. So, opo. Yes, ma'am. Okay, to... Kaya kayo, automatic yun eh. Kayo ang nag-advise. Okay. Nagawa nyo lang yan based on the law. Eh kayo ang nag-advise niya, pero pag gagawa ng law about health, hindi mag-consult na sa inyo. Oo. Oh. Kayo, kayo nag-ano niya, ginagustify niyo yan eh. Tapos ngayon lumabas na sa foreign, hindi yan requirement. Tapos eh, yung mga foreign na pumapasok dito, hindi naman ayodized salt. Ba't yun eh, require tayo na ayodized salt? Ano ba yan? Can you ano make a, 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 a written report on that so that we can ano refer we'll that up. to the DOH? Ba't Apa. nagkaganyan yan? Saan ba ang under ang FDA? DOH, di ba? Oh. Uh, Madam Chair. Sinulat yan ni Senator Plavier nang hindi nyo in-advise yan. Eh, kayo rin na nagsasabi because of Iodine deficiency. O ano? Um, Isagutin ko lang po yung kaninang comment. Yung pong regarding po doon sa iodized salt po, for, uh, yung uh, processed food products produced in the Philippines, nirequire po kasi ng batas na iodized salt ng gamitin. Intended for local market. Pero pag the product is intended for export, they may not use iodized salt. 
Yun po yung exemption po ng batas. However, dun nga po sa batas kasi nasusulat na yung mga local local manufacturers must use iodized. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Di, yes. Madam Chair, di, we cannot produce uh, iodized salt to be used for... Uh, kaya hindi kami makapag-produce ng natural salt for export kasi bawal eh. I will Walang clarify, eh. Madam Chair. There are some countries... May I? Uh, there are some countries uh, that require when you export to them, it's called a certificate of free sale. So, a certificate of free sale means you certify and that will be issued by your local FDA or local authority that whatever they will buy from abroad, uh, they, whatever they will buy from the Philippines, you are also selling in the Philippines. So, let's say you have a country like Japan, they want a certificate of free sale. Sabi nila, okay, ayaw namin ng iodized. So, dapat, yung ibebenta nyo sa amin, hindi rin siya iodized and it's locally available in your market. But in our market, dapat lahat iodized. So, there is a conflict in the policy because we cannot, the, the local will not issue a certificate of free sale because it is not sold freely that that product is non-iodized. So, kailangan lang po ng exemption to allow these policies. From our point of view po sa salt industry, we support the salt iodization. We believe it's kailangan po ng bansa. Ang kailangan po natin is a very good, well-studied mechanism for exempting so that the salt industry can be competitive. Uh, you cannot do that in the Philippines. You cannot. <laughs> it's either you remove that or you put that. Kasi alam mo, pag ganyang hihingi ka na exception, corruption na naman yan eh. <laughs> I see, Matt. Corruption na naman uh -oh. yan. Hindi pwede yan. It's either we remove it. Kung ang ibang countries, hindi naman nila nire-require, why are we requiring? Uh, from the we requiring okay po i-remove na lang yan and then kung ikaw ay may may ano may ayub din so minung ka ng gamot but papahirapan lahat ng tao because ikaw ang may ayub din deficiency minung ka ng gamot 30% human consumption parang mali yun na ako ayoko ng exemption hihingi ka ng exemption di corruption na naman yan paghingi mo ng exemption magkakagasta ka sa paghingi ng exemption di tama yun mali yun either way kaya ako tinatanong I want him um, Dr. Pausto to write ano, para magka-basis kami to remove it. Kasi kung other countries are not requiring it, why are we requiring it? Oh, why are we requiring it? Pahirapan natin eh, we are a poor country. Dapat nga mas maluwag sa atin kasi hindi masyado tayong magaling ang ating mga farmer. Ba't natin pahirapan? Eh kung yung other countries, hindi nila pinahirapan, ba't natin pahirapan ng ating mga farmers? Ayoko na may exemption. Pag malakas sa inyo, hindi eh, bibigyan nyo na exemption. Pag mahina sa inyo, hindi nyo bibigyan na exemption. Di ba? O di lahat na lang tayo magkaroon ng iodine deficiency. Di ba? And we Madam, solve it through other means. Diba? Madam Chair. Madam yes. Chair. We have prepared a, ano, uh, uh, from uh, Dr. Tofilo San Luis, a prepared short, very short video statement. If uh, no, the committee will allow it to be, to be, uh, to, to be, to be played. Yes, watch it. Ma oh, Madam sige, Chair? Pa. Yes. Uh, ne, Madam Chair, sige, I, ano, statement of support lang, Madam Chair, dun sa sinabi nyo, tukol dun sa exemption. Siguro ko may iodine deficiency, baka mas maigi pa yung DOH, magkaroon na lang ng separate program para gamutin itong mga may iodine deficiency kaya sa yung buong industriya pipilitin na mag-iodize. You Senator Bin, I will do that. Okay. You give me your presentation uh, uh if you want to uh, I want to watch that. Uh, Mr. Kong Hong. Okay. Are there any more comments uh from the private sector? Yung Mami, if I may. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, I'll just summarize what was my pa yes. PowerPoint okay. originally. So uh, I'd just like to uh, highlight a few things. Uh, three things. Uh, we want to emphasize that uh, we, have three, we have three points in mind about what the salt industry needs. 
uh, representing the salt industry. First is the ease of doing business. And the second is the need to develop and construct salt farms if we want to be self-sufficient. And the third one is what kind of government support do we need? So the first one is ease of doing business. Ease of doing business, Madam Chair, is talking about what kind of permits do we need in order to set up salt farms, uh, construct salt farms. The, uh, there are several kinds of permits, but I will just talk about a couple of them. One is with the DNR. When the, uh, when the DNR is in charge of all uh, shorelines, so they must release the areas for consideration to be used as certain purpose, example, salt farms or fish ponds. They must release that to the BFAR so that the BFAR can issue naman their fish pond lease agreements. The second one is uh, the issuance of uh, environmental compliance certificates. Setting up anything in the shoreline requires an ECC. So uh, we don't expect our salt farmers and so on, so small, medium, or large farmers to be able to comply because the ECC process is quite a lengthy and complicated process. So many um, reports are required, so many permits, uh, so, so many acronyms, and so on. So, so because of this process, uh, these environmental laws were put. So even before iodization law came in, these kinds of laws, the permits, the ECC, and so on, were already contributing to the, to the difficulty of the ease of doing business. Yeah. And, and so uh, one of the things that we're highlighting is... Uh, Mr. Kong Hong, can you put it in writing? Uh, wag mo sa akin explain ang, ang ano, ease of doing business. Kasi ako, ako ang chairman ng Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. Ako kumu... Ang daming kumukuha ng ECC sa reclamation. Kinausap ko na sila dyan. Ako na chairman sa Senate. O nag-issue pa rin sila ng ECC. Pera yan eh. Pera yan. So what we will do dito, uh, we will make it easy for the salt farmers. Kasi okay lang yung mga ECC na mga big time eh. Talagang gumagasta sila dyan. Pero iba namang salt farmers natin eh. We, they have to go through with that. I'll talk with the the DNR to to solve that problem. Kasi ako, ako ang first victim niyang ECC na yan eh, on reclamation eh. <laughs> Oo. Eh, ako, pumunta na ako sa presidente eh. Hindi pa rin napigil eh. Ang laking pera niyan eh. Kasi nga, nagmumura na presidente, ayaw pa tumigil eh. Thank you. So, that's a big problem. So, what we can do is give me your write-up and when we make the law, we will specify in the law how the small salt farmers and the cooperative can get a place to to produce salt in an easier manner. We'll think about it. I'll consult the secretary of DNR. Kasi pag, uh, pag <laughs> talagang mabigat ang DNR sa ECC. Mabigat yan. Oh. Uh, hindi, hindi kaya yan ng small farmer. We have to help them. Kasi ako nga, senador na, eh, nahirapan pa eh. Di lalo na yung small farmer, mm -hmm. di ba? Kasi ako, lumaban ako sa reclamation because we have four rivers going out of Manila Bay. If they will reclaim it, then walang lalabasan yung apat na river namin going to Manila Bay. Mm -hmm. Nagmakaawa na ako eh, Chairman, Senate Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. Hindi ako pinakinggan. Oh. Hindi ako pinakinggan. Kaya I know that problem. Oh. Mm -hmm. Very big problem yung ECC sa DNR. Malaking problema yan. So, what we will do in the law, we will make it easier for small farmers to be able to get an ECC from DNR. Thank you. We'll think about something. I don't know what we will do, but I'll consult the Secretary of Environment and Natural Resources what we can do for the salt farmers. Kasi dependent sila dyan eh. It's, it's, ano, and they are small. They cannot afford yung maglakad sa, ng ECC. Mabigat yun. Mabigat yun. Yes. Yes, uh, you're from? Pangasinan State University. Pangasinan, Pangasinan State University po, ma'am. Okay. We recognize you. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Honorable Senator Cynthia Villar and 
other centers who are present via Zoom, and my co-resource persons. So from the academic sector, we would like to manifest our strong uh, support to the Senate bill uh, introduced by Honorable uh, Senator Cynthia Villar, uh, the 1334 and the 211 of Senator Nancy Binay. As the Senator Villanueva and Senator Villanueva, as an agricultural university of the major salt producing province in the Philippines, uh, we are happy and we salute you for initiating this uh, act or acts to somehow address the problems of our dying uh, salt industry in the country. And if you uh, may allow us, Madam Senator, uh, Honorable Chair, if you can include in your uh, Senate Bill uh, 1334 Section 5, the uh, contribution as a component of the Philippine Salt Industry Development Council, uh, the uh, representative from the academe, so maybe from SUC uh, or SUCs of the country, uh, from uh, especially from Agricultural University. Ma'am, thank you, Pop. With that, uh... Uh, may I request all those who have uh, a stand on this to submit their written stand on this so that we can consider them. We'll read all of them so we can consider them in writing the law, which I will depend on the floor of the Senate. So uh, thank you very much for coming. And I hope uh, after this, we will have a better salt industry of the future. Thank you very much. Ingin nyo na lang. Ihit.